Hi everyone, Pastor Steve here just wanted to let you know, in order to stay in touch during this time in which uh, we're dealing with the COVID, we have our various internet connections to keep, uh, keep us all connected. The website, gracechurchsac.com, the Facebook page, or you can even email us. At any rate, these are the ways that you can stay connected. Hope you enjoy the devotional or praise and worship, whatever you're about to enjoy, and uh, hope to, please stay safe. Bye. Hello and welcome to today's devotion. Um, today we are in the Gospel of Matthew. And what I'm going to do today is repeat the actual scripture verses that was read on Tuesday's devotion because there was an audio um, problem that came up. I I think it might be on my part, actually. But nonetheless, um, Tuesdays did not play out the way we intended. So we're going to repeat Tuesday's devotional, which was the um, 22nd chapter of Matthew, verses 23 through 33, regarding the Sadducees and, and the resurrection. That being the case, as we go into the word today, let's pray. And uh, we'll go into the word. Thank you, Father, for your grace and for your kindness, for your faithfulness and your truth. As we continue to grow, not only in our knowledge of the truth, our knowledge about the truth, but the experience, the actual real knowing that we get through putting your truth into practice and living it through our lives. May that truth that you're working in our lives grow, and as such, it certainly sets us free to worship you, and that's what we intend to do. That's what we want to do. We want to worship and trust you even more. So please do that today as we go into your word. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. So this is, again, Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 through 33. That same day, some Sadducees... That is a particular Jewish group who say there is no resurrection, came up to him and questioned him. Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies having no children, his brother is to marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers among us. The first got married and died. Having no offspring, he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second also, and the third, and so on to all seven. Last of all, the woman died. In the resurrection then, whose wife will she be of the seven? For they all had married her. Jesus answered them, You are mistaken because you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Now, concerning the resurrection of the dead, haven't you read what was spoken to you by God? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. The resurrection is the key foundational pillar of Christianity. Not simply that Jesus came out of the tomb as profound and as awe-inspiring as it is, if we don't understand the full context of what the revel, uh, resurrection reality is, it can be somewhat confusing and subdued in its impact. The resurrection is a promise, if you will, that God is going to one day recreate this entire world. 
And in so doing, when God does that act, when God recreates the world, the very physical properties that are now in effect regarding this world and in fact the universe will be transformed as well. For example, we live in a world that is dominated and ruled by the physical reality of decay. Everything is in the process of decay in some form, way, or another. In the resurrection, there will be no decay. In the resurrection, there will be no death, unlike the reality of this world in, in its current form. In the resurrection, there will be no murder. There will be no violence. There will be no fear. There will be uh, none of the injustices that we experience in this world. It will be a brand new creation, not new starting over that represents what we currently live in now, but a new creation, meaning the very properties and nature thereof have been altered, changed, and now reflects what we read in Genesis chapters 1 and 2. That there is no longer a separation between the unseen spiritual reality and the physical reality. Now there is that separation. We cannot hear with our physical ears what is happening in the spiritual realm nor see with our physical eyes. It is the awakening of our spirit and the sensitivity that God gives us in our spiritual nature that allows us to perceive these things. But not in the resurrection. In the resurrection, it will be as in Genesis where the spirit of God, God's very presence, is among us and is as evident as anything in the spiritual, in the physical realm is to us in this world. This is the resurrection promise. This is the resurrection idea, if you will, that was embraced by a number of Jews at this time. And Jesus has referred to this resurrection in his own ministry, embraces it. By the way, the Pharisees, which was another Jewish group of the day, they did believe in the resurrection, but the Sadducees did not. And it was the Sadducees that came to Jesus trying to trick him. Well, if this is the case, what about this law of Moses regarding a brother's wife? How is it going to play out? And so Jesus responds by, in two ways. First, he says, you're mistaken because you don't know the scriptures or the power of God. Now, the scriptures refer to the resurrection multiple times, not as the word resurrection, but as the reality to which the word resurrection uh, relates to. One of these is the uh, book of Job, where it says, even though my body will waste away, though in my flesh I will still see God. It is a insight, a prophetic insight into the resurrection. There are countless um, other Old Testament references to this. But Jesus uses the reference that says, are you not aware of, and then he quotes this, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the living. And so it, it, it throws a monkey wrench, if you will, into, into their logic that once a person dies, they are no longer in existence. And going back to the first part of Jesus' answer, he says, you're mistaken because you don't know the scriptures or the power of God, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And it's a mystery. What does that mean? Does that mean in the resurrection reality that there isn't marriage in the way that we experience it here? Yeah, that's what it means. But how that looks, we have no idea because we're not in that reality. And the important part of of, of, of Christianity, the, the, the pillar, the foundation, is that while the promise and the hope of a future new creation that God has promised through the prophets, through Scripture, he would one day fulfill that promise while it, is, it, it had been embraced by certain people of Jesus' age, there was no sign, if you will, 
or wonders or any kind of evidence that God was moving toward that reality until Jesus' ministry proclaiming the kingdom of God and then his resurrection. It was Jesus who was the first of all humankind to come back from the dead in a resurrected state. Other people during Jesus' ministry had come back from the dead. When you read in the Gospel of John, Lazarus is an example. But he came back from the dead in the same, in the same, with the same nature that he had during his life before he died. Jesus, on the other hand, came back from the dead, ushering in the resurrected reality that had been promised in Scripture. That's why he can say in the Gospel of John, I am the resurrection and the life. He is a living, breathing testimony, not only of his own resurrection, but that through him and by him and as a testimony of what took place with regards to him and his resurrection, God has now given proof and sign that one day the future resurrection of the entire world will take place. And those who belong to Christ, who have this intimate connection, this calling that transcends any other identity, this longing for this reality, will be resurrected finally and be with him in the most intimate manner, be with God in the most intimate manner that we can ever imagine possible. That is the hope, the Christian hope of the resurrection. It is the foundation, and without it, we have no Christianity. Well, my friends, I pray that this reminder of the resurrection and of our hope bless you today. I want to thank you for tuning in. We'll probably continue on with this uh, chapter the next time we, we uh, meet. Until then, may the peace of God be with you now and always, and may you walk in his strength and joy. Take care, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.